think you know God? You think he loves you? Well, I've got news for you, boy. Who will disappoint you. He will take everything you love and he will destroy it. The movie started in the year 2060. We see an old man, Elijah, beside a digital tombstone. This man says he wants to tell us a story about his father, Reverend Ayodele Timeleni Johnson. A very unique and special man. To know how special this man is, back in 1953, Timeleni is able to stay underwater without breathing for 57 minutes 18 seconds. He speaks 16 languages, of which four of it were extinct. Timeleni would even translate the holy books from one language to another just to have fun. He graduated top of his class and the highest honored cadet in the Navy and one of the youngest to become a pastor in the Holy Church of England. Remember, I said he was underwater for just 57 minutes 18 seconds. It wasn't because he was tired, he could have stayed longer. He only came out of the water because he was bored. So that's how special Timeleyin Johnson is. Now we travel to Nigeria. Reverend Timi is a wealthy man, he's a shipping trader and a successful man at that. See now, check out his Rolls Royce. Reverend Timmy returned to Nigeria from England with his wife, Bridget, and their child, Alison. He is here to settle. As soon as he gets to Nigeria, he joins the local church, he rebuilt the church and even repaired everything in it, so they all loved him. In fact, he was the one that was called to pray for Princess Alexandria on the night of Nigeria's independence in 1960. The whole point is that Mr. Timmy is a very special man. Now, there is a gang called Baby Fire Gang that has been terrorizing that town. One day, when Reverend Timeleni took his daughter out to get an ice cream, the baby fire gang came to scatter the place. Reverend Timi and his daughter quickly hid themselves in a stand. Baby fire then approaches a man that refused to run. Eh, you are bold, Abi. He removes his cap, flings it away, and it landed right where Timi and the child is hiding. Then, they kill the man and leave. Timi comes out and picks up the hat. Hmm. The pastor and elders then meet inside the church to discuss this incident. The police says, they can't arrest baby fire because there is no eyewitness. One woman says that, but we all know it's baby fire now. The husband says, ah ah, do you want us to mention him in court so that baby fire can kill us too, Abby? The reverend could not keep short any longer. He says, he will swear it in court. Ah, the wife is shocked. I saw him. Timmy says, so I'll swear it in court. Ah, the wife begins to cry and beg him that night not to do so. Don't do this to this family. Now, the court resumes. The lawyer asks if he saw the man that killed Mr. Jeremy the other day, and without wasting time, the Reverend points at Baby Fire. That's him. Hey, the Baby Fire was arrested and taken away. Problem solved, right? No, this is when the whole problem began. Baby Fire that Reverend Timmy pointed at in court is actually working for the leftover colonial masters. They use him to eliminate anybody that causes them trouble. For example, that Mr. Aji Romi that was killed is one of those that has been pushing for all white men to return to their countries since Nigeria has gained their independence. That is causing troubles for these colonial masters and therefore they use baby fire to eliminate him. Even the judge, a white man, he meets with the others and guess what happened? The judge says there is insufficient evidence to prosecute baby fire and for this reason, baby fire is free to go. Again, Reverend Timilei is in trouble. And the wife warned him, oh, she warned him. Hm. The wife quickly whispers to the husband that we have to leave. Quickly, he packs up his things for his wife and child so they can all move to Lagos. Come with me, the wife insists. Timmy says he can't start all this and then leave. This gangs will terrorize this town, so he has to stay to finish what he has started. Hey, the wife says, but they have machine guns. Timmy says, who need guns when you have God? Hmm. Promise me you will come back to me. He promised, so they leave. Now he goes to church to pray, and while praying, someone pointed a gun at his head. As for the wife and child traveling to Lagos, they were blocked on the road by baby fire. Turn around, turn around! The driver could not do that before they were captured. The driver was killed, and the family was taken off stage. Off stage? No. They took them back home to meet Timileni that had already been battered seriously. And right in front of Timileni, they poured fuel on the car, with the young child, Alison, crying seriously. The wife quickly tore her skirts and covered her eyes, and quickly, as Timmy is still watching them, 
They set the car ablaze. Bonnie referring to Timmy's wife and child, and also they left them there for Timmy to watch. Quick disclaimer Breath of Life is written and directed by BB Sassori. This recap is not meant to replace the movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie in its entirety on Prime Video. Also, note that this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village. For the next 9 days, Timmy just laid on the floor there. Rain or sun, he didn't get up. People came to help him get the car away and clean up. He just laid there for 9 days. And on the 10th day, he got up to do what God would not do. Reverend Timmy that once said, who need guns when you've got God, now says, who need God when you have guns. Then we see Timmy at Baby Fire's house, sitting, waiting patiently for him to wake up. The sound of the light I was playing with wakes Baby Fire, and he quickly grabs his gun to shoot. Guess what? Timmy had already removed the bullets. Remember, Timmy was a soldier. Timmy wants to John Wick this man. Baby Fire says, you are not a killer. <clears throat> Timmy gets up, points the gun at him, and from a distance, we hear gunshots. He killed him and sets his house on fire. Then Timmy returns home to also kill himself. So as he points the gun to himself, he fires, but the gun wouldn't shoot. Ah. He points it at the wall, the gun shoots, but then he points it to himself again, it will not shoot. He tried several methods to just kill himself. He even drank bleach, lots of it, at least so that he will die once and for all. Guess what? He no work who. The breath of life in Timmy refuses to stop. So he kept on living. 35 years later, Timmy is now an old man with no one living with him. So he needs help around the house. This is where the man telling us this story, Elijah, comes in. Now we see the young Elijah coming from Lagos to find work, as in work as houseboy with the goal of someday opening his own church too. So on his way to Timmy's house, he sees a man, a chief, with some white men in front of the church analyzing it and locking the place up. The man sees Elijah looking at them and he was curious. Quickly, Elijah rides away. Now, many other boys have come to work for Timmy, but one after the other, Timmy uses his gun to chase them all the way. He can't live with anyone. Now, it's Elijah's turn. So, he enters the house. While looking around, Timmy asks him, Are you a thief? Before he could reply, he says again, Are you deaf? Before he could answer, Speak, boy! Now, the shock triggered Elijah's asthma, so he took his inhaler and then replied, No, sir. I'm here for the job of a houseboy. Houseboy, sir. Uh, more like a house manager. Uh, my name is Elijah. Elijah Odudu Abasi Okun. Hmm. He showed him his CV to prove that he is qualified, but Timmy says, No. Elijah begins to beg, Please, sir, I'll do anything. I'll cook, clean, and do anything to bring this great house of God back to his glory. That phrase, house of God, got Timmy angry. He turns and looks at him. He points the gun. If you ever say that name in this house again, it will be the last name that you speak. Is that clear? Elijah says yes. Anyway, he employs Elijah as his house manager, giving him instructions on what he eats and when he has his breakfast. Does that mean I have the job, sir? Elijah is happy he's got the job, even though it was at gunpoint. And yes, he gets to work immediately, cleaning and cooking as promised, impressing Reverend Timmy. No, just Timmy. He is no longer a reverend. He has his guns now. He no longer needs God. Elijah made him his breakfast, three eggs and a coffee. First serving, Timmy complains, too much salt, do you want to kill me? He smashes the plate on the wall. Ah. Elijah brings another, no taste, he smashes it too. Ah. One after the other, he kept smashing them. Sixteen times Elijah tried before getting what Timmy finally wants. Wow, well, we can't completely judge Timmy. I hope you remember what he had gone through, right? One evening, he walks by a room only to see Mr. Timmy holding a burnt teddy bear belonging to his late daughter. Now, Elijah did not know the whole story or what happened or who owns that teddy bear, but he could feel the pain Mr. Timmy is going through. So every night, he will sit outside the room watching Timmy inside crying with the teddy bear. So one day, Elijah was gardening when Timmy's lawyer, Mr. Coca, meets him. He informed Elijah that he handles the estate and finance and he will be the one paying Elijah's salary. <gasps> Thank God though. Elijah says he has been scared to ask for any money from Timmy. In fact, he has been using his own money to run things. Well, finally, he will get paid. So Elijah says, Sir, um, I don't know if there is something I am doing wrong. Mr. Timmy is always upset. What did you just call him? 
Who told you to call him that? See, eh? Whatever you do, do not talk about his family or even talk about God. Hmm. You are only here because he likes you, okay? Hmm. Whenever Elijah is free, he goes to the church to fix it and clean the place up. Now, Mr. Timmy must not know that he is using Timmy's money to clean the house of God or else there will be trouble. So, Elijah will go around inviting people to come for service and also share tracts. So one day he goes to the clinic to collect another inhaler when he sets his eyes on a beautiful lady, Anna. She volunteers there and because of this, Elijah also starts volunteering just to visit and pray with the patient because of Anna. So one day, he was eating with the patient and playing when one of them asked, Pastor, thank you for everything you have done for us. And are you sure there is nothing you want us to do for you? Hmm. Actually, you know what? He planned with all these patients to invite and convince Anna to attend the Bible study at the church. Now, all 37 of them gave her the invite. And yes, Anna had to go. Now at the church, immediately Pastor Elijah sees Anna, he was speechless. He could not see anything. He was just begging God not to let his asthma fall his hand. Anna says, hi. And yes, the asthma kicks in. He quickly sucks his inhaler. So they continue talking for a while, as awkward as Elijah could. So Anna says, I got your message, all 37 of them. And Elijah says, I hope I am still charming and not creepy. Mm. Anna says in time she would know. Anna says she's not into the Bible stuff anyway. She just wants to say hi to him. And I need to get back home. Will I see you again? I mean, will we see you again? Would you like to see me again? Anna asks. He says, sure. And then Anna suggests he walk her home. Elijah is excited and he gives God a thumbs up and then runs after her. So on their way home, Elijah asks what Anna does with her free time when she's not volunteering at the hospital. She says she just finished school, so she's only figuring things out now. And you? Elijah says, um, he works as a houseboy at Mr. Timmy's house. He says so in a humble way, but Anna raises it. She says, ah, you are more like the house manager as I've heard. How did you know? She says, ah, she did her research now. The whole town talks about you. So it wasn't hard to ask about the handsome guy running the church. <gasps> So you think I'm handsome? Hmm, you better relax before you need your inhaler again. They both laugh. So they get to her house, and Elijah asks if they could meet at the river by 4 p.m. the next day. She says no problem, and they laugh, and she walks away. So the next day, our dear Abasi Okun is early at the river with a picnic setup, dressed in his best church shirt, tie, and trouser. So Anna arrives. Uh-uh. Why are you dressed like that? In his mind, Elijah says, ah, is you mad? This is my best shirt too. Anna says, why are you dressed like you are going to church when you are coming to swim? Swim? I didn't say swim oh. Anna says, I thought you said we are coming to the river. Oh, his asthma kicks in again. Elijah gets the message. Swimming is more romantic than just sitting by the river. You want to swim? Anna just takes off her clothes immediately ready for a swim. In his mind, Elijah says, that moment was when he knew he was going to marry her. Now, it took Elijah five months to learn to swim properly, and they meet every day. So because of him, Anna had to attend a few Bible studies even though her presence is just to tease Elijah and not to learn anything. Also, instead of buying a car, as rich as her father is, Anna bought herself a bicycle just so that she could ride along with Elijah. As for Mr. Timmy, he is now well acquainted with Elijah. He enjoys the food and the egg and coffee and everything, all is going well, right? right? Hmm. One day, while conducting Bible studies inside the church, Mr. Timmy angrily badging, quoting the Bible, No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. <gasps> Scared Elijah gets up. He says, Psalm 101, sir. Elijah then turns to him, Sir, I have done everything at home. I thought you would still be sleeping. Timmy continues by quoting Colossians. Elijah completes the Colossians again. Then Elijah says, Sir, you said you don't want to hear anything about God, so I didn't tell you about this, sir. I don't have any time off for myself, so I do these things whenever you're having your siesta. Timmy yells at him, then, if you don't like the job, get the hell out! Then he turns to walk away. Elijah then quotes his own verse. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy. You shall give him his wages in time. He quotes this well. Timmy says, oh. You think you've been sent by the Lord to teach blah blah blah, eh? As a challenge, Timmy then quotes a challenging verse for Elijah, asking that if by the next morning he can find where that is in the Bible, he would give him time to be doing his study. All through the night, 
Elijah, but you couldn't search and search for that verse before finding it. Guess what? He wrote the answer in a piece of paper and served it to Mr. Timmy the next morning. Timmy, thinking he's about to have his egg breakfast, only opened the plate to see Agai's chapter 1 verse 5 waiting for him. He angrily throws the plate at the wall as usual. That night, Timmy sits alone thinking about his late family and crying as usual. Then he picks up a video camera. Now, there's no means of playing the tape on the video to remember his family, so in annoyance, he throws it away and Elijah sees the tape. The next morning, we see Elijah ironing, singing, dancing when Timmy was calling for him. Where is this boy? He enters his room. What is wrong with you? Elijah says, sorry sir, I, I didn't hear you. The rain beat your newspaper, so I thought I should iron them out for you. Timmy says, I broke my glasses last night, so I can't read them anyway. Elijah says, I can read the asthma kicks in again. I can read them for you. Timmy says, what's that? He says, asthma sir, and where is your inhaler? He brings it out. See. Only one of us have the right to die in this house, and that person is me. I'll kill you if you die before me. Now come. So Elijah begins to read the newspaper to Timmy. Timmy enjoys the reading because he could talk now. Gradually, Mr. Timmy also gets more free and talks more about what he has learned and countries he has traveled to and things he had seen when he was younger. One day, Anna comes home to visit Elijah. The purpose is that she wants to meet this Mr. Timmy. But Elijah has been pushing it off, telling her not to come. So, our stubborn Anna comes knocking anyway. Bad enough, she comes to knock even when Elijah is not home. She knocked three times and then Timmy opens the door. Good morning, sir. I am Anna Amakri. I don't care. Bam! He locks the door on her. Ah, what was this? Anna knocked again, louder this time. Mr. Timmy brings out his dear gun. <laughs> Who needs God when you've got guns, right? Terrified Anna begins to walk backward, then she tripped and fell, hurting herself. Now seeing that blood, he turns on something in Mr. Timmy, then Mr. Timmy takes her inside to treat. While helping her, Elijah sees them, and that shock makes his asthma kick in again. He was surprised, Mr. Timmy, helping another person? Hey? Anna then comes to visit him more often, even though Elijah is still scared of Mr. Timmy, although Mr. Timmy no longer minds her coming around. So she comes also to help him with houseworks and so on. They get closer and closer. She begins to want more than a kiss. Elijah also wants more too, but you know, because the Lord said he couldn't. Now, remember that video that Mr. Timmy was unable to watch? Elijah has sent them to Lagos so they can help him put it on a film projector as a surprise to Mr. Timmy. That's the only way these tapes can be watched. So he set it up in his daughter's room. He begins to play the video when Mr. Timmy enters, warning him never to enter that room again. <gasps> he sees the video playing. He sees his late wife and child. Timmy breaks down and begins to groan, weeping seriously. Elijah simply walks out of the room, leaving him to that moment. The next morning, Mr. Timmy comes to meet Elijah with many more tapes. He puts them on the bed. See, I want to watch this. All of them. Elijah says, ah, no sir, we have to take it to Lagos to be put on a film projector and that might take almost a month. A month? No, no, there must be something we can do. Elijah says, maybe we should get a different projector. Fine, that's what we must do. Today? He says, now. Me and you? He says, yes, you can drive us there. Then his asthma kicks in again. Ah, what's wrong? He says, I can't drive, sir. You can't drive? Yes, sir. Ah, meet me outside. Now, outside, Mr. Timmy begins to train Elijah on how to drive. Mr. Timmy was the worst teacher ever. He shouts and he slaps and he insults him in different languages. Useless, useless, stupido, idiota. Idiota. Bispoliesni. Some utility. Unitile. Idiota. Putra. Merda. Olodo. Ode. All this insult doesn't mean Elijah will still know how to drive. Now, frustrated, Mr. Timmy sits on the bonnet of the car, worried. Drive this car. Drive this car or else I will kill you! Ah, Elijah tries his best and yes, the vehicle begins to move slowly. Finally, you have done it, boy! You have done it! You are not useless after all. Sir, it's moving! It's moving! Should I stop it, sir? Are you stupid? Drive! Drive! Very interesting scene here. Now, they rest up for a while. Mr. Timmy gives Elijah beer to drink, you know, his first beer, it appears. So Timmy asks Elijah, how does your friend up there feel about you and Anna? By friend up there, he means God. Elijah says, Anna and I haven't done anything, sir. Eh? 
you've been with her for a whole year and you haven't mm, mm. he begins to mock elijah elijah says it's not funny sir and for the first time mr timmy talks about his late wife bridget he says that they waited until their wedding night before they had sex and that night was magical they made the decision together to wait so talk to anna tell her how you really feel elijah says he wants to do it but he knows it's wrong timmy says ah for god's sakes man i'm not talking about what god wants from you he? Timmy just mentioned God. He mentioned God twice. Elijah says, you called his name. God. Twice. Did I? Yes, twice. Elijah begins to dance. We now, oh. Finally, he has made Mr. Timmy call the name. Celebrating. Mr. Timmy just laughed. See, meet me at home. So they finally got the tapes from Lagos and they watched the tape together. Mr. Timmy no longer watched this tape and cry. Instead, he watched it with Elijah and Anna. And instead of crying, Timmy will laugh and talk about the happy moment. Although, that story always made Anna cry. Now, one morning, while having breakfast, Mr. Timmy says, So Elijah, eh, eh? this man calls me Elijah for the first time. He had always been calling him boy, boy, boy. Timmy asks, what's wrong? He says, nothing sir. He is surprised that Timmy could actually call him by his name. Okay. Timmy says, so since you can't drive, how do you get into town? He says, ah, he can show him. So he takes Mr. Timmy on a bike ride through town. The next morning, Mr. Timmy noticed that Elijah served him four eggs instead of three. <clears> hmm, <throat> this is a bribe. So he asks him, what do you want? Elijah says, he needs a tie. Anna has invited him to meet her parents. Wow. Mr. Timmy says, hmm, <clears throat> he will think about it. Later, he brings him two different ties, a red one and a blue one. Red shows you are powerful and you can achieve whatever you set your heart to, while the blue one means you belong here. So what do you want to say? Obviously, Elijah wants the blue one to show that he belongs with Anna's family. Now before going, we see Elijah writing a letter to someone. Now he gets to the house, Anna commends his choice of tie saying, ah, it looks cool. Good. Then the mother joins them and she's a bit friendly. She says the father will be with them soon. So she asks, what do you do? Elijah says, he is the house manager of Mr. Johnson. Which Johnson? He answers, Timmy Johnson. <gasps> Who? Are you the man trying to start the local church? He said, ah, yes, mm, but they are just a Bible study group for now. Immediately, the mother's mood changed. Why? What is wrong? What do they all have against Mr. Timmy and the church? Hmm. Now at this point, we hear a car horn. Oh, the father is around. Now Elijah's heart is beating fast, almost jumping out of his chest. Anna says, don't worry, don't worry, eh? he will love you, okay? So the father enters, Chief Amakri, and as soon as they both set eyes on each other, Elijah's world almost turned upside down. Ha! Anna says, Daddy, meet Elijah. Good day, sir. The man pulls him closer. The first thing Elijah says, I didn't know you were Anna's father. And the man says, look here, boy. I think you better start going right now. Get out. Oh, what is going on? Elijah tells Anna he has to go now. Thank you for having me. Anna is confused too. Wait, what? Elijah quickly rolls out of the room and as Anna is about to follow, get back here. I need to talk to you. So this is what you've been encouraging her to do, eh? Bring a house boy into my house. Anna says, no, he is the house manager. The father says, shut up. That is the little brat that is trying to stop the hotel project. He must never set foot in this house again. Elijah is not yet out of the house, so he heard all of this. Hmm. Now wait. Which hotel project is Elijah trying to stop? When did Elijah and Chief Amakri meet that we didn't even know about? The father orders Anna not to ever see Elijah again. Anna says, wait, so are you the one trying to destroy the church? Now let me explain. What happened is that Chief Amakri wants to buy that church building to demolish it and build a hotel there. That is the fight between him and Elijah. So Anna replies to her father, I am 23 years old and you can't tell me who I can and cannot see. The father says, don't test me. Now the mood gets tensed up. Elijah's girl and Elijah's church is in the hands of one man, Chief Amakri. Will Elijah lose both of them? What is he going to do? Well, we shall find out. Let me use this moment to ask you to please subscribe to my channel. If you love what I do and the effort I put into it, please kindly assist by liking this video and subscribing. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification button so you will always be informed whenever I upload a new video. Thank you very much. Now back to the movie. So what will Elijah do? A week later, while having their regular Bible study, Chief Amakri walks in to confront them. What are you all doing here? Don't you know this is a private property? Elijah says, sorry sir, I mean no trouble. 
Then why are you here? This is private property. Elijah says, actually sir, it belongs to the state and the community. Also, he said he has written to the state asking for permission to use it. And that is also what is in the letter he sent to Chief earlier, along with the state's approval, begging Chief to reconsider the demolition. Chief says yes, he received the senseless letter. But what Elijah does not know is that there is a land use charge on that land that is older than Elijah. The land use charge has amounted to the sum of 49 million naira, and he has paid the state that money. Technically, he owns the land the church is standing on, and he owns the church too. Bam! He chose him the certificates and even planted it on his face. Hey! Now he says, unless Elijah can pay him back the 49 million naira in 90 days, he should just leave that building. Now as he turns to leave, Elijah says, ah, this Elijah, he will always talk, he always has a response to everything. Very bold, like his namesake in the Bible. Anyway, Elijah says, do you not fear God, sir? The chief says, yes, my God has money. And Mama Gio says, ah, God have money too. The chief says, not 49 million naira. Then he leaves. Elijah and his asthma had to calm themselves down. Later, we see Anna rushing to meet Elijah at the river. She says she can't believe her father is trying to destroy the church. She just found out too. She said they have to stop him. Elijah says, but how will they do that? He tells her about the 49 million naira. Anna says, what? Then he says the father came to offer him a deal to pay back the 49 million naira in 90 days and he will let them go. But he knows that he can't raise such money. Anna says, says who? Elijah says, oh, look around you. There's no one here to help us raise this. Anna says, no. Anna says, we have to try. At least there is one person. Who? I'm sure you already know who Anna is referring to. Yes, Mr. Timmy Johnson. Elijah says, no, 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 no. Ah, no. Okay. Anna suggests that since her father is a businessman, eh, what if they show him a business plan of the church? How the church can be profitable? Tithes, offering, merchandise, camps. Elijah says, stop. This is not a business venture, so stop it. Anna says, I know, my love, but I'm just trying to suggest something. And Elijah says, did you just call me your love? It's just a word. Elijah then officially tells Anna for the first time that he loves her and then they both kiss. These <laughs> people don't know what they are facing yet. Anyway, quickly, they begin sharing flyers of fundraisers. No joy. Everybody closing door on their faces. Not one single person collected the flyer, not to talk of contributing the money. Now, Elijah and Anna meet with the lawyer, Mr. Koka. They ask him to help them tell Timmy about it. Koka says, he was almost sacked too for bringing that up. Ah. Anna says, they only have two weeks left, sir. Mr. Koka says, well, Timmy says he can give Elijah his one year salary in advance, which is not up to 500,000. Mr. Koka says, and he will give them one million in addition. Anna's mother too added something. Altogether, it's about 5 million naira, and they need 49 million. Hey! Anna then confronts Mr. Timmy by herself, since Elijah could not do it. She says, she knows 50 million naira is the small thing to him. And why is he not helping? After all, Elijah has dedicated most of his life for him. And even Elijah's salary is not enough to buy him a new bicycle. So why won't you give him the money to save the church? A church that you built and pastored. Timmy says, it's not a concern. Anna says, you are not even using your money. So what exactly do you want? What do you want from him? How can you be so cruel? Timmy did not even pay attention to anything she's saying. Anna then bring up his family into it. You claim you love your family, eh? Timmy gets up. Anna continues though, she's not scared. She says, she doesn't know how someone so heartless could love anybody. Elijah shouts, Anna! Ha! Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Anna has spoiled everything. He rushed to meet her outside. How dare you do that? How would you feel if I came to your house and start insulting your father? Anna says, he is not your father. Elijah says, you don't know what he has been through. I beg, it's been over 50 years. That's not a reason to still lock himself up. Elijah says, you are making things worse. Worse? My father will destroy the church in two weeks. How much money have you raised? Elijah replies with money, money, money. That's what people with money always talk about. Their conversation takes a new turn when Anna says, you think I'm after money? If I am about money, what will I be doing with somebody like you? She holds it. Ah, she just misspoke. Elijah says, oh, what will you be doing with somebody like me? It's true that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If your father is willing to sell the church for 49 million naira, I wonder how much he is willing to sell his own daughter. Taza! She slaps him and then runs away. That statement is actually painful. Now, after that small fight, Elijah would go to the river to wait for Anna. But no, Anna never shows up anymore. 
He even rides to her house to check through the window, but Anna still refused to meet him. Come rain, come sun, Elijah will stay there under the rain waiting for Anna. Sometimes he even sleeps there overnight. Now one day, the next morning, Anna opens her window curtain only to see that ah, this guy is still here. Instead of going to meet him, she just walk away. Hey! So one morning, while Elijah is serving Mr. Timmy's coffee and eggs, he says, Sir, we have organized the protest to stop the church demolition that is about to happen tomorrow. So after your breakfast tomorrow, sir, I would like to attend. Mr. Timmy says, No problem. And then Timmy tells him a good news. He says, Back in the 1920s, when the Abba protest took place, the women burnt everything belonging to the Europeans banks, post office, etc., except the church because they didn't know that the church belonged to the white men. Technically, what Mr. Timmy is telling Elijah is that the land and the church on it does not belong to the state. It belongs to Her Royal Majesty, the Queen of England. <gasps> so that's good news. Elijah gets hopeful. There is a way out. Mr. Timmy says he will inform his lawyer, Mr. Koka, to see what he can do about it. Elijah is very happy about this option. Now, Anna wants to go out of her room only to find out that she has been locked inside. She yells and calls for her mother to open the door. Mm -mm. No one opens the door. Apparently, her parent doesn't want her to join the protest. Now, at the church, the members form the straight line and as the excavator arrives to destroy the building with police pointing gun at them, everybody runs except Elijah, waiting to see what will happen. So the driver begins his countdown. 20 seconds to move away. 8, 7, 6, 5. And as he counts, we see the buckets coming down on Elijah. Elijah closes his eyes and ready to die as the countdown gets to 1. Suddenly, a white man arrives from the British High Commission and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You cannot destroy this building by order. Chief says, no, no, you cannot do that. I paid the levies for this land. The man says, yes, we can. This building has been designated as a national monument, a museum that people can see and even use as a church. Again, wow, what a save. He then hands him the document, see rejoicing. They all hug Elijah. Now, Lawyer Koka delivers a private message to Chief Amakri. He says it's from Mr. Timmy Johnson, saying, Do not fool with this boy. That is, don't take Elijah for granted. So, Elijah rushed home to meet Mr. Timmy, thanking him for helping. Timmy says, I hope this doesn't affect your work. Elijah says, ah, Actually, after everybody left the church, while he was alone, God spoke to him and asked him to take the church more fully. Timmy says, But I've given you two days every week to do your Bible study stuff. So if you want to convert it to worship this, that's none of my business. Ah, sir, the Lord asked me to stop domestic work and take up the church permanently, a full-time pastor. Ah, Timmy says this is about the girl, right? No, no, it was God. That's why he saved the church. Timmy says God did not save the church. I saved the church. I did. Elijah says God used you as a tool, sir. Timmy blasts him again in anger, insulting him, calling him once a houseboy, always a houseboy. Actually, Timmy is just angry that Elijah will be leaving him and when he does, who will be there to help him in the house? Who will make his egg and coffee? Elijah says he will not leave until we find someone else. Timmy angrily says, there is no we. We are working out on us. Now he has to find someone else, train the person now to make eggs and all. No problem. Leave. Get out. You think you know God? You think he loves you? Sorry to disappoint you, my boy. He will take everything you love and he will destroy it. Then he walks out in anger. Simi has always been blaming God for the death of his wife and child. Now, Anna's mother finally opens the door for her to come out. She says, you locked me in. Then she walks closer to the mother and says, I'm going to marry Elijah and leave this God-forsaken house. Now, we see Elijah coming to serve Mr. Timmy's breakfast in his room since Baba is angry and doesn't want to come out anymore. So that night, Elijah is about to pray to God when Anna walks into his room. Ah. Anna, you can't be here at this time. What if your father and Mr. Timmy? Are you okay? She just rushed to hug him and begins to kiss him. Elijah says, wait, please, not like this. Anna says, we have to. It's the only way. Already taking over her wears when Elijah quickly stops her. What's wrong? Remember, her father does not want her to marry Elijah. So she believes doing this will be the only way for her to be with Elijah. So she says, trust me, please. Anna insists it's the only way. Elijah giving and the rest is history. Oh, uh, not. His asthma kicks in. He couldn't breathe. Anna starts looking for his inhaler while Elijah is already choking. She gets it and 
baby sucks, sucks, ah, it's not working. She begins to scream for help. Mr. Timmy enters and quickly they rush Elijah to the hospital. The doctor says Elijah has chronic lung failure and it could have been diagnosed long before now. Mr. Timmy says they thought Elijah had asthma. The doctor says no. Then Mr. Timmy says, okay, what do we do now? The doctor says Elijah will need a lung transplant. For now, the only solution is just leave him on the ventilator because flying him out of the country is not an option. Because no country out there will put his interest above the interests of their own citizen that still need lungs. And he says since it is both lungs they will need to change, it is not going to be easy. Mr. Timmy went as far as inviting the best pulmonary doctors from different countries, but still no solution. They even tried to pay people that has just lost their loved ones to give them their lungs. None of them accept. Hey, this is a serious challenge for Mr. Timmy. Does this mean Elijah will die? Mr. Timmy does not want him to die. So Timmy and Anna meet at home to discuss about Elijah. They talk about the first time they met him and how his breathing was the first thing they noticed. Anna begs Mr. Timmy that he should promise that Elijah won't die. Mr. Timmy says he won't die. He already warned him that he will kill Elijah if Elijah dares to die before him. Now Mr. Timmy writes a letter to Elijah addressing it as dear son. So he goes to his daughter's room, he goes through her things for the last time, then goes outside. He drives Anna to the hospital to meet Elijah. Getting there, Anna says, are you not coming in? He says, no, later. He needs to sort some things out first. Then he tells Anna to please take care of Elijah, and then he drove off. Mr. Timmy went to the orphanage home where Elijah grew up to get more information and then officially adopts Elijah as his own son. So the lawyer says, I know you love this boy, but is it wise to give all your wealth to a boy that will die in a week? Timmy says, my son will leave. He signs the document that finally transfers all his wealth to Elijah. He thanks Mr. Coca for his support for all these years and then leaves to go to the church one last time. One last time, he bows before God to pray. And the first word in his prayer was the last word Jesus says, saying, Father, why have you forsaken me? He says he knows what to do, but he can't do it alone. Then the door to the church closed, a heavy wind blows in, and for a brief moment, he sees his daughter playing the piano. Memories of those days flashes before his eyes. His mind is at peace with the life he has lived. And then, we see them rush him into the emergency room. The next thing we see is somebody waking up. Not Mr. Timmy, it is Elijah. Mr. Timmy has died and given his lungs to Elijah. Where is Mr. Timmy? He asks. Where is my father? Anna shakes her head and the flood of tears burst open. She cries. He cries. I cry. We all crewed. Anna gives Elijah the letter Mr. Timmy wrote to him, saying his goodbyes. He wished him well and says while he may be gone, Anna will be by his side. And don't worry about her father, eh? Once he knows you are now a rich man, he will let you marry Anna. And yes, exactly. Anna's father begins to come close to Elijah because he knows he's now wealthy. And the last part of the letter says, don't be angry and don't feel guilty for being alive. Do you know that Elijah flew to Cambridge to test his new lungs from his father? The lungs that can stay underwater for over 50 minutes. This time, Elijah stayed underwater for over one hour. And also, Elijah used the money for so many good things, and then the movie ends. Now, I agree this movie is very long, but it's worth it, so worth it. I personally learned some things about God and how he allows some things to happen. Most times, it's for the good. Now, if you want an emotional movie like this, please check out the movie 4444, also on Amazon Prime, or just watch the recap on our channel. So, thanks for watching this video. For more amazing content and film reviews, please subscribe to this channel and I'm going to bring you another recap again. So until next time, thank you for watching. I am Sam and this is The Film Village.